Oh, we're uh, live. <laughs> we are live on Facebook. Yay. All right. <laughs> awesome. All right. So this is something new we're doing. This is a new setup. So let us know. Drop a comment if anything's not working, you can't hear us or whatever. But welcome to our series of education events. We're talking all things Hoka today. And um, we have our Hoka experts with us, Mary and Josh. Thank you guys oh, for joining oh. us. <laughs> And why, yeah. yeah, why don't you guys start by introducing yourselves, um, Mary? Why don't you start tell us um, what your role is at Hoka, and um, why don't you tell us what your favorite thing is, what your favorite activity is to do in your Hoka shoots? Oh, woohoo! <laughs> well, I'm Mary Scully. I am the account executive here in Min um, Minnesota area, and my favorite thing is probably to go trail running with my dog in my Hoka shoes. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right, um, and Josh, yeah, introduce yourself. Well, hello. Uh, my name is Josh Clowder. I am the field experience rep for Hoka One One. Um, I've been with Hoka for about four years. Um, and so Mary being on the sales side, I'm on the marketing side. My job is staff education, demos, events, um, and then helping and assisting with um, both digital and physical um, marketing support. Awesome. So you guys are, like, super important at Hoka. Oh. Uh, I mean, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yep, right there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. This is going to be sort of our um, kind of all things Hoka, you know, education night, like anything that you've wanted to know about Hoka. Um, we're going to ask those questions and um, kind of dive into the history and the different shoes. And um, yeah, so we'll leave a little bit of time for questions at the end, hopefully. Um, and if people are watching, we'll drop a comment. If you have a question, um, we'll try to get to those as well, too. But we're going to start with the history of Hoka. So let's talk about, like, where this brand came from, um, how it got started. I mean, they're kind of a unique-looking shoe. There's not anything else like it on the wall. So, like, where did the idea come from? Should kick it off? All yeah. right. Well, um, so Hoka, One One, in case anybody was wondering, it is One One, um, started in France. Kind of two crazy French dudes, um, Jean-Luc Diard and Nico Mermou. Um, really, they just set out to solve a very simple problem. Um, running hurts, running downhill hurts. So they're trying to figure out how they could spend more time on their feet without feeling as beat up. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, both um, Jean-Luc and Nico were working for another footwear company um, in Europe, um, specifically in the trail world. And they're, they're both adventure athletes. They, they love just spending time in the mountains, you know, whether they're strapping skis to their back or bringing a, mic, uh, a bike up the mountain um, and then just bombing down. They love just that exciting thrill of just bombing down the mountain. And, well, running down a mountain is a lot of fun, but it, but it hurts the body. Sure, yeah. So mm -hmm. they were trying to develop something that could allow them to, you know, spend a couple hours going up the mountain, but then just bomb down without, you know, being as torn up the next day. And I, I suppose just a little fun fact, when they first set out um, to kind of, you know, uh, solve this problem, Hoka wasn't, wasn't intended to be a shoe. It was actually mm. just going to be an accessory, like, say, you know, a uh, traction aid, yak track kind of deal. That oh, interesting. Okay. Pull out of your pack at the, bottom, uh, at the top of the mountain, you know, you know, take in the sights and then strap it on your shoes and just bomb down the mountain. Mm. But it worked so well running downhill that they incorporated it into, like, a shoe um, profile. And I wish we had a photo of the original because, ooh, it's, yeah. uh, it's a pretty Yeah, it's shoe. pretty cool. Like, if you hop onto Google, like, do an image search, you'll probably find it right away. Maybe we'll drop a comment, um, a picture in the comments at some point. But, um yeah, that like cutaway of the shoe, they like literally just sort of like took parts of other shoes and like literally just glued them together to like mm -hmm. get the look and the cushion, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, at the time, the like the world of running was in like, just I don't want to say turmoil, but but it was really changing. Like right. in the running world, everything was about minimalism, right? Right, yeah. Barefoot, yeah. Um, in the world of like endurance and gravity sports, everything was oversized. Fat tire bikes had just hit the market big white powder skis had just come out. And so they really kind of blended both worlds um, of that kind of minimalist foot position, but with the maximal cushioning of Hoka to protect the body. So you can benefit from that low heel to toe drop, but you have all the protection um, with our very high level oversized midsoles. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, so how long ago was that? When did Hoka get started then? Uh, we'll call it 2009. Okay. All right. Yeah. So fairly new within, you know, the market, but not really actually. I mean, yeah. that's... <laughs> a long time ago <laughs> it's like that meme that says like oh 2020 was you know 10 years ago and yeah. then but 1990 was yesterday <laughs> yeah, you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly yeah yeah so so that original shoe was like that super oversized like yeah. monster looking like <laughs> frankenstein sort of shoe um the 
correct me if I'm wrong. Is the is the was the Bondi the first the first shoe they made or Bondi something similar? Bondi was the second. second. Uh, okay. The Mafate was actually our first Got shoe. It. Okay. I believe Which the Bondi trail, came yeah. out. Yeah. So um, trail running is kind of the heart and soul of Hoka. Um, Jean Luc and Nico just. Uh, the French Alps is kind of like their home. Um, they love being in the mountains. So mm -hmm. trail running has always been just a very important part of Hoka, um, as you see through our product. Mm -hmm. um, but the Bondi uh, came out about six months after the uh, Mafate is sort of that tarmac road version. Okay. All right. Um, and so then, you know, what, what kind of, like, what, what has the kind of the evolution of the shoes been? I mean, we started with like one or two shoes and I mean, even just like probably what, five, six years ago, there wasn't even like a stability model really within the Hoka line. And now, I mean, it's huge. There's, there's a gazillion shoes, more stuff coming out every single year, fancy hikers, which I know Mary's really excited about. We'll talk about <laughs> later. Um, yeah. So can we talk about the evolution of that shoe, the different types of shoes that they kind of came out with over the years then? Absolutely. Do you want to jump on this, Mary? Or um, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'll, I mean, I'll jump in whenever um, yeah, um, as you, as I had mentioned, like we started very much as a trail running shoe company, uh, but of course more people run on the roads. Um, so there are a lot of early adapters and say like the, the ultra triathlon world mm. that were kind of knocking on the door asking for, you know, Bondi like high level cushion shoes that they can use for these, you know, very, very long uh, triathlon um, efforts. Um, so it started with the, uh, the Mafate and then the Bondi and then the Stinson came out, mm -hmm. both trail and, and tarmac versions. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And that's mm -hmm. been, you know, the fun part of working with Hoka is that it's still very like a family type atmosphere, a uh, family type company. And mm -hmm. it's just been this natural kind of snowball growth yeah. um, where they add styles when it's needed, when the, you know, the public's kind of demanding it. Yeah. Um, but they're not just coming out with stuff, just to come out with stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, like uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think I ran my first trail marathon ever. And I remember seeing people running in Hoka and I was like, Oh my gosh. And I remember seeing it pretty dominating the trail industry. And then it kind of snowballed and I was like, oh, now triathletes are, you know, are running in it and more roadrunners. And now you kind of see it everywhere yeah. from nurses, doctors to walkers. Um, there's something for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think my first experience in Ahoka was that original Clifton, um, mm -hmm. just because I was always injured and, you know, couldn't get through a training cycle. And I put on one of these goofy shoes and, oh, gosh, I like this. <laughs> um, that's when I drank the Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. So you kind of touched on this a little bit, but like, let's, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the name, the, the name of the brand, like, where does it come from? How do you pronounce it? Is not hookah? Mm -hmm. um, what, what is it? What, where did it come from? And um, what's that all about? Yeah. So um, hoka one one, uh, it actually means to fly over the earth. So when you see our, you know, slogan time to fly, um, that is where that stems from. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and it's, uh, so you, you might assume it's French, and yep. I've heard a lot of people, like, ask if it's Hawaiian, um, but no, Hoka One One um, comes from the Maori language, so New Zealand, Polynesian mm -hmm. Islands. Yep. Sure. It was just a culture that our founders really fell in love with, and so yeah. they kind of adopted that for the name. Mm -hmm. and yeah. As Mary said, Hoka to fly, One One is over the earth, over the ground, mm -hmm. and that's sure. essentially the sensation that John luc and Nico wanted people to have when running in their shoes, like, you're just flying along. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not out of control, but just, you know, yeah. right on the edge. Very cool. And there's uh, some of the names are, um, of the, some of the shoes are interesting. So like um, the Bondi, that's um, Bondi Beach in Australia. Mm -hmm. right on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think there's a lot of others like that as well, too, that are kind of have these like sort of um, callbacks to like, you know, particular races or locations or whatever, too, which mm -hmm. is kind of fun. So, yep. yep. Yeah. Clifton is a beach in South Africa. Yep. Um, a lot of beaches. Arahi is actually, um, this is a, it's a Maori word, which translates to guide. Um, oh, interesting. So, you know, being in a stability yeah. family yeah. makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, cool. a, lot, a lot of our shoes have huh. meaningful names. Like now that. we're all, when we're guiding someone, we're like, come come follow me. I'm Arahi, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, awesome. So, okay, that's kind of like a little bit of the history of Hoka. Um, but let's kind of dive into like the science of Hoka. So you kind of, I mean, again, you sort of talked a little bit about it. You've got some cool like little things to show us, I think, today as well in terms of like how the, you know, science and the geometry and stuff works. I mean, they definitely are it's a different looking shoe. It doesn't, mm -hmm. like I said, there's nothing like it on the wall. Um, you know, what's the deal with the, the soul? Like, why does it look like that? What is, what's the purpose of, of all of this stuff? Well, I know that's um, a complicated question. <laughs> yeah. A lot of pieces of that. <laughs> um, got to unpack it. So 
as you said, you know, you look at a shoe like, say, the Bondi, and it looks like a lot of shoe. Um, but from our original prototype to, you know, the Bondi 7 now, um, the same kind of three core principles of Hoka um, have stayed consistent, again, from beginning to now. Um, and I got my little cutouts because I'm a visual person and mm -hmm. I like to kind of show. So the cushioning is there for what you expect. Um, it's there for protection for your body, um, shock absorption, weight distribution. Uh, most tokas have a little bit wider um, base and profile, again, just to distribute the weight a bit more evenly. So, yeah, that kind of first component is that oversized midsole just for protection for the body. Um, from there, because you have so much cushioning, as I mentioned, we are a trail, sh trail uh, shoe company. If you're just on top of this giant block of foam, not exactly, you know, stable on single track, you know, mm -hmm. trucking through the mountains. So instead of putting you on top of that cushion, we actually sit you down inside. Um, almost like, I, I like that analogy, the, the surfboard to kayak, mm -hmm. where if you're on top of all that cushion, if you're standing on a surfboard, I probably push you, Mary, and yep. you're getting wet. Fall right over. Um, <laughs> but if you're in a kayak, I give you a <laughs> shove, you're going to probably have a little bit of natural motion, mm -hmm. um, but your center of gravity is going to stay very, uh, very true, and it's going to be a very inherently stable platform. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're able to have so much cushioning, but create such a very stable platform. Yep. And then that kind of third component or third pillar of the secret sauce of Hoka, if you will, um, is that rocker shape, that meta rocker. And it's all about energy transfer. Mm -hmm. So whether you heel strike, midfoot strike, forefoot strike, as soon as you come in contact with that ground, the meta rocker will help transition the energy forward, saving little bits of energy um, over the long haul. And this has applications and, you know, for more things than just running, but also walking mm -hmm. and some medical applications that we can uh, chat about later. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, yeah, so that's actually, so like you had said that, you know, uh, Mary, you mentioned that you see them everywhere now. And um, most of the people, honestly, that come in to buy, you know, hokas are looking to get a hoka for either like a work shoe, they're standing on their feet all day, or, you know, they have some sort of like a metatarsal issue or some sort of, yeah, like you said, a medical issue. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, of course, we sell plenty of them as trail, sh you know, as running shoes as well, too, you know, but, um, but that's probably not like the majority, I wouldn't say. Um, one of the things that we like about the the hokas, especially like the Bondi, for example, is that it's a little bit stiffer. You know, it doesn't have that bend in the front um, that like a traditional you know running shoe would have. So it can be good for um, metatarsalgia um, and those kinds of issues as well. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different foams in the different shoes as well too, right? So there's two different types, um, or well, actually three, right? Three different kind of categories or buckets that we put the hoka shoes into: mm -hmm. um, the fly glide and then kind of that hike category yep. sky. trail sky, sky. Yep. sky yep. Sorry, yeah so let's uh let's talk about that a little bit like what's the difference between those well yeah in your fly category you're gonna be uh definitely more of a responsive shoe um so yeah here we have the elevon um and a sneak peek of what's coming here in june the mock um we have the a little bit more responsive um, and a little bit more early stage meta rocker. So it's going to help propel you forward um, to go a little bit faster. And then, you know, in the glide category, we're going to have a, uh, a little bit more plush uh, foam than you would see in our fly. And even in the glide category, we have, you know, like the Clifton has a lighter, more responsive foam than the Bondi. So even there, you're, you're going to have um, different fit and feel within that same category. And This you can okay. go ahead. <laughs> oh, as I say, um, you know, the Bondi, you know, Josh was touching on this a little bit. Um, the, the Meta Rocker here is a little bit late stage, right? So um, it's going to be a little bit more stable underfoot, a little bit more ground coverage versus if you were to go into, say, the mock, you can see this is a little bit more rounded. And by that, it's going to transition a little bit quicker through your foot. Ah, okay. Yeah. And so it speaking in terms of like say somebody that maybe has a foot ailment like plantar fasciitis mm -hmm. or martin's aroma he looks rigidus or limitus um the meta rocker does also sort of help with that yeah. in the fact that well a the midsoles of a hoka doesn't really flex right, yeah. um, mm -hmm. so that meta rocker helps move the foot forward instead of you having that really heavy flexion across your metatarsals right. mm -hmm. you know activating your windlass putting a lot of stress on your fascia and you know if you don't have a lot of mobility in any of your in like say one of your met heads yeah. um, that can be really painful yeah. mm -hmm. the great thing about that the meta rocker is it helps transition the energy forward you don't have to have that big um, kind of bend or flexion across your yeah. toes mm -hmm. and even if you don't like that, like super squishy, um, I, 
I mean, take a shoe like the Elevon, for example. It's high-level cushion like the Bondi, um, but it does utilize our ProFly midsole. So the heel yep. is softer like the Bondi, but the yep. forefoot is a little bit firmer. Repulsive, um, just feels more energetic. Right. Um, and then there are also shoes like, well, use the Mach for for an example, the entire outsole that you see, it's not exposed foam, it's actually mm -hmm. a rubberized EVA. Mm. So it's about 80% rubber, 20% EVA. They don't tell us the real numbers, you know, Shh, it's a secret. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but that rubberized EVA, um, it has just, it's very resilient, high abrasion rate mm -hmm. um, and, and an even higher energy return. So it doesn't pack out or pack down the way traditional EVA foams do. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually the good side. <laughs> well, the tech um, I know, you know, the, the uh, so that rubberized EVA, because we don't have exposed like carbon rubber pods that you're putting right. on, you're saving a lot of weight there. Mm -hmm. um, it is a very lightweight, uh, resilient material. Um, just even looking at like, say, our standard models, we have a very thin layer of rubber on there. Mm -hmm. um, because our midsoles are so thick, um, they are designed that you can burn through, you know, the rubber pods and into the midsole. It doesn't affect functionality. Mm -hmm. Aesthetically, you know, maybe it's not the prettiest, but... Mm -hmm. It's all about function. It's all about feel. Um, and at Hoka, like I always say, we look different, we wear different, uh, we feel different. Mm -hmm. um, and at Hoka, it's all about experience. So just, you know, putting them on, experiencing it. It doesn't matter if the uh, outsole looks ugly. Um, sure. How do you feel the next day? Yeah, yeah right. Yep. Yeah. Well, because I know that I've had some people, like, bring a ho uh, Bondi back and be like, oh, well, the, the outsole is all, you know, it's, it's all weared down already. But that's kind of part of the mm -hmm. magic, right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like the that wear on those kind of exposed eva is good what's going to give you that little extra grip you know um yeah as it wear down it. as it wears down it doesn't um like affect the grip or the traction okay. you know as people would be like oh i'm gonna slip or something like that but it actually is pretty sticky so, so. it's normal like yes if you see some wear on the yep. bottom of your shoe on your yep. hokas that's your that you should see that that's normal yep, is not exactly. affecting the the shoe at all yep okay okay good to know well what can we let's talk about um uh, the trail options as well too because there's um some different outsoles on those as well um some other tech you know that we could maybe talk about there yeah so my um i mean my first run in a hoka shoe was the ch the original challenger it was wonderful super great uh, my true love right here is the speed goat. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is my, you know, winter road running shoe as well as my trail shoe. Um, but what's great is we utilize Vibram. So we have a yeah. super sticky um, outsole. So you're going to have great traction on wet rocks. You're going to have great traction in the snow, um, kind of anywhere, mud, everything. It's, it's very, very wonderful. Um, plus, you know, if you can see the... Um, material that's wrapped around that kind of helps protect with debris and water if you're mm -hmm. if you're running um just thinking about uh running through mud and rivers and and all that good stuff so and then we have two very different shoes here that um that Terra Liquid carries and we have the speed goat and the challenger so something to call out is the challenger you know this this outsole um as well as the shoe itself is kind of, we kind of call it the Clifton of the winter where um, you can go running in the, on the road or on the trail. And then Speed Goat is going to be more geared towards that actual trail um, trail enthusiast. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. My first shoe ever, um, just, I'm just thinking about this. The first shoe that I ever wore um, to train for a marathon or half marathon was the Conquest, which doesn't exist anymore, but there's kind of some similar shoes. Um, but yeah, I had a metatarsalgia problem. I have a bunion. And so, you know, I was just having all this pain when I was running in a regular, you know, shoe. I realized now kind of over the years that part of it was the drop on the shoe. So, mm -hmm. like, most hokas are going to be in, like, a 5 millimeter mm -hmm. range, yeah. 5 millimeter yeah, drop. Four to five for four to five. pretty much every model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that drop, that lower drop really helped. But, man, that having that stiff forefoot just did amazing things for mm -hmm. my metrosalgia and that bunny and like I I don't think I would have ever been able to train for that half marathon mm -hmm. without those shoes um and so I think you know too that I think they're good for like in, in injury recovery or things like that as well too like I think people maybe you know need to think a little bit more maybe be a little more open-minded about you know hoka for like lots of different things as yeah well, so yeah 
Um, and something too that I absolutely love about the the speed goat in general in this um, in this case is it's so soft and plush and protective that it doesn't actually need a rock plate like a lot of other shoes need a rock plate in there so you don't feel yeah. the 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 rocks. This you just kind of bounce right off. It's yeah. super comfortable. So <laughs> absolutely, I, I I sometimes joke, but um, if if I've ever ever discussing Hoka's with somebody who's never tried them on. Um, I always tell them to do the Lego test, like, oh, yeah. you know, step on, like, a sharp rock or something <laughs> in these hokas. I bet I bet you're not going to feel it. All those parents out there right yeah. now are like, all right, <laughs> kids can leave the Legos yep. on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um... So we have we actually have a fair amount of people watching right now. Um, so thanks everybody for joining us. Um, if you have any um, questions, make sure you drop them in the comments. We'll try to get back to those, um, and we'll also you know maybe leave a little bit of time for questions at the end. But if you have questions right now, just drop them in the comments. We'll try to um, get to those. So we kind of talked about you know the history of Hoka. We talked a little bit about like the tech, and I'm sure there's probably other things that we'll maybe you know talk about tech wise once we kind of get into the sort of the the tour of the shoes. Mm -hmm. But the next thing I wanted to do was kind of do a, yeah, like I said, a little bit of a tour of the shoe. Like, let's just talk about the different shoes. I mean, we have a whole pile of stuff on the table here. You know, what's different about each of these shoes? We talked a little bit about it, but like, what, why would somebody choose one shoe over the other, you know, and um, what, what we're going to use these different shoes for? There's, there's a lot of, lot of options here. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely there are. Yeah. And it all kind of comes down to needs and, yeah. you know, uh, as you said, the use for the shoe. Yeah, yeah needs and wants, right? Yeah. So, I mean, when you come into a, a store in general, um, and Hoka understands that people don't come in to buy a product, they come to buy an experience. So Josh touched on exactly that. Like, you know, we we look at experiences when we're, when we're um, talking about a product. So the Bondi, maybe someone's walking or standing on their feet all day, or, you know, they're running a hundred mile a week or something like that, and they need that extra protection. They might feel better in the Bondi or, th or maybe the Clifton um, if they want something a little bit lighter, you know, maybe they have need a little bit of guidance, maybe they're pronating. So they, they'd want to go to like the Arahi here. Um, and it's nice and responsive. So, so let me hang on. Yeah, let me just yeah. stop you for a second because the Arahi is the only shoe that I know of at least that has um, stability that goes up into the forefoot. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, right? And why is that important? Like why, what, what is that? I mean, for those of you people walking, yeah. walking, watching at home, like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, so if you look at the uh, the, the outsole of the uh, Arahi here, you can see, yes, this kind of hook or what we call a J-frame. Um, sure. And what it's designed for is to help you with every stage of pronation. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people, they'll strike the ground on, the, on their heel and they get that ankle flexion and that's when they drop in. Mm -hmm. Some people are more traditional and they um, pronate right in that kind of stage too. Some people don't pronate until they get to their forefoot and they start to toe off. So the guide rail goes all the way up to that first med head to mm -hmm. just help guide the foot in every stage of pronation. Another fun thing about, well, fun, but the J-frame um, in both the Arahi and the Gaviota, it's not a medial post. So that just means it's not a hard, dense posting that's going to push you to the lateral side of your foot. It's going to help support you when you need it, but it's not going to dictate your foot strike when you don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, right. it allows your foot to act more naturally within the shoe. Exactly. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah. So... What's the difference between like Bondi and Clifton then? So you were saying um, more protection, Bondi. Yep. A little bit softer, more A little flexible. bit softer. Yeah. The, so the Bondi is going to be like your high plush marshmallowy cushion, um, super comfortable all day. It's my go-to for all day as well as some of my longer runs. Um, if I know like I'll be running on more concrete versus tar. Um, the Clifton's going to be a slightly more responsive, lighter weight, um, a little bit faster feeling for me at least. So, um, yeah, Josh, you want to? Yeah. I mean, I like thinking of the, uh, the Clifton as like just a nice soft supportive mattress. Yep. The Bondi, just throw another mattress on that mattress. It's that next <laughs> yeah. tier up in, in yep. overall cushioning. If I'm spending a long day on my feet and hard surfaces, the Bondi's my guy. Um, mm -hmm. And otherwise, the Clifton's kind of my daily sure. daily runner, daily trainer, yeah. commuter, yeah. Um, what have you. It's like a healthy balance. It's yeah. like, oh, it's yeah. nice and light, but it's also going to give me protection. Sure, yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the Bondi we saw, um, you know, a lot for, yeah, that work shoe. You know, people are on their feet a lot or in that kind of um, – injury, you know, recovery yeah. or needs, um, orthotic, you know, something that's going to be a little bit stiffer and not bend as much. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, li where the Clifton's going to be a little bit lighter, faster, um, feeling shoe. And then 
once you go from there, though, we can then we get to kind of get into that fly category. So mm -hmm. the fly category uses a different type of foam. So it's not EVA like mm -hmm. we have on the Bondi and the Clifton, right? It's still an EVA yep. material, but okay. but different densities, different density, um, kind it. of different properties, different specific gravity, if you will. Okay. Um, so all the fly categories will have that that pro fly in the midsole, mm -hmm. and as I mentioned, that's a little softer in the heel, a little bit more responsive in the forefoot. Okay. So with a shoe like the Mach or um, a shoe you have in stock currently, the uh, the Elevon, um, the mm -hmm. Elevon has that pro fly. It's essentially again Bondi, but more energetic, um, just more athletic, um, responsive feel underfoot. Which, right. which, if you do think about like heel striking, I'm a mm -hmm. big heel striker, so that that extra cushion in the heel just works wonders for me, um, just because it absorbs that shock. And then, but when I'm towing off, I just want that snappy feel, you know, and I want to want something in that fly category. So, okay. And within the 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 trail running category, we have kind of the same same sort of thing as well, too, right? So like the Clifton Stinson would sort of be that really you know kind of soft squishy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then something like the um, the speed goat or like the torrent or whatever would would be in that more fly yep, so the, sort of category. Yep, the speed goat will still be in that kind of that glide, that comfortable okay. um, plush. But the torrent, yes, the torrent is has the pro fly um, throughout the shoe. So, okay. yeah. All right. Um, okay, and then a lot of people probably don't know that they have hiking boots, which yeah. I know Mary's really excited about. <laughs> so she was like, we can't wait to talk about these. Yeah. Um, and actually, personally, like, um, I have two pairs of the Toa. Um, that's what we have here. Um, I love that. I've been wearing it pretty much exclusively every day since mm -hmm. um, I <laughs> busted my ankle in, in September. Um, so it gives me the ankle support, but it gives me the, you know, the soft, um, you know, cushioning, you know, for all day on my feet. Um, I I love it. It's, 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 it's hard to come by even too, because it's so popular, but there's two different um, types of shoes that we carry in that height category. So the Toa and then the Kaha, which will have, you know, more cushion. Yep. Um, but then there's a new hiker coming out soon. Yes. Right. Which I think we've, we've you got, guys have yeah, coming in. Yeah. Well. Look, so. Looking at July 1st, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's coming uh -huh. up. So what's like, I mean, you know, I love it, but mm -hmm. I mean, you know, why, why a Hoka hiker over, you know, any of the other more traditional brands, I guess. Yeah. I think it, like the first point that I always bring up is the weight to cushion ratio yeah. is just unparalleled by really anything else you look at the wall or see on the wall. Um, the Toa, I mean, it's a 15 ounce mid cut uh, Gore-Tex waterproof boot. Mm -hmm. um, the entire midsole is that rubberized EVA we spoke of. It has Vibro mega grip, dual directional lugs in the outsole. It's light, it's Hoka cushion. Um, but another thing to point out is with all of our hike shoes, the Kaha, the Anacapa, the Toa, they're actually built on um, hiking boot lasts. Huh. So it's gonna okay. be, the fit's gonna be more comparable to a traditional like hiking boot, as opposed sure. to like a running shoe fit. Mm -hmm. um, so you're gonna have a bit more room, you know, long days on the trail, your feet are gonna swell yeah. even more. Um, yeah. So it's gonna be more accommodating for. Yeah. yeah. So just a little bit like when I try them on compared to competitors and everything, I just always feel like, yep, this is like you get want the nice Hoka plush feel hiking all day, but you want that nice structure of a hiking boot. Um, yeah, they're fantastic. Um, and Josh touched on Gore-Tex, you know, mm -hmm. I use mine um, all winter, yeah. you know, all winter, all hike. <laughs> walk, I'm my dog is psychotic, so it has to be out 20 <laughs> times a day. So, <laughs> walking the dog, shoveling the snow, yeah. um, and I'm somebody who has uh, sweaty feet, so <laughs> it was nice wool socks. I was perfectly warm. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, so we have probably about 15 minutes or so left um, of what we kind of planned here for the, the broadcast. Um, so are there things that you guys wanted to talk about that we didn't touch on? And then um, for those of you in the audience, drop a question in the comments. Um, we can kind of get to those um, lister questions as well. So anything that we didn't talk about? Um, that you that you want to touch on? What well, did we miss, Mary? Well, Josh, <laughs> Josh <laughs> can talk forever, which yeah, is yeah. great. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, you don't need me the word vomit for uh, <laughs> fifteen minutes. Um. Um, I I would just say, you know, if you're apprehensive of trying stuff, or you see something on the table that you want to try on, just like just try it on and see how it feels. And um, that's, I mean, that's how I fell in love with the brand. So yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. Um, but I will say too, like. 
touching on the hiking boots again, you know, Tiffany said that they carry the Kaha versus the Toa. And we talked a little bit more about, you know, Bondi versus Clifton, but to touch on Kaha versus Toa, you know, Toa might be like your lighter weight hiker shoe, um, you know, going out for a day hike or two days or three. Um, but the Kaha is going to be a little bit more rugged. So I'm someone who I love to go out to Colorado and I love like hiking 14ers um, and doing that kind of stuff. So that is my Kaha all day, like just something a little bit more aggressive. And it comes up a little bit higher. Yeah, it comes up a little bit higher. It's just, it has a little bit more stable support system. It just feels more like it's just the only thing it's missing is a, you know, a steel toe, right? Sure. So <laughs> it's uh, very, it's an aggressive but nice, comfortable boot. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more athletic. So. Yeah, and also the point out, none of our hiking boots, Kaha, Toa, and Kappa, none of them have any shanks or anything no. like that to create additional stability. Yep. It's just that Hoka midsole, which yep. is already rigid right. enough. Yep. Well, and so that actually kind of um, leads me to, you know, another, you know, like I said, um, there wasn't really a stability model until a few years ago, but we always put people in Bondi's as a stability mm -hmm. shoe because of that, that kayaky thing you were talking mm -hmm. about before, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> it's hard to articulate to a customer sometimes yeah. that, you know, how the Bondi can be just as stable, even though it's classified as a neutral shoe. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. just all about that different way that Hoka kind of approaches a running shoe. Mm -hmm. um, and, and should people be concerned about like um, rolling an ankle, like, you know, because it is so high? I mean, it, you know, there's just a fair amount of cushion there. Mm -hmm. Should they be concerned about that? Is mm -hmm. that somewhere... Yeah, because you sit so far down into that cushioning, um, again, it's a, it's such an inherently stable platform. Um, most people wouldn't have any issues. I mean, mm -hmm. don't play basketball or pickleball right, in, sure. your, in your running shoes. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. Everyday running, walking, hiking yeah, yeah. applications, you should yeah. have no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So one thing I was thinking about, too, when we were talking about, like, the different types of shoes was, you know, um, so we have the the – the Clifton and then the Challenger, um, similar shoes, but, you know, kind of with a, that different outsole. So sometimes that's sort of, you know, the way that we, um, we kind of uh, fit people, you know, into um, somebody that's like maybe doing a little bit of, um, you know, on the gravel more, maybe gravel mm -hmm. running, but mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of road, a little bit of trail. And so it's, it's the ATR. So mm -hmm. that stands for all terrain. Yeah. Um, what, can you grab the, let's grab that Challenger and let's look at the, at the yep. outsole there. So, um, here so because we have both the um more aggressive more aggressive lug design as well as you know versus a speed goat which is a full yeah yeah we got a lot a lot there yep. so this is road trail mm -hmm. anything in between road the trail trail the road i mean we don't all have beautiful single track out our back door right. mm -hmm. and the challenger is such a great versatile option for that the the lugs are there for the off-road, but they're nice broad lugs, so it does feel very smooth if you're, say, running down a road or a bike mm -hmm. path or a sidewalk. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's popular in Minnesota, especially in the Gore-Tex version for mm -hmm. winter um, because of the traction. It feels like a road shoe, but it is, um, it's going to give you a little bit more traction underfoot for winter running. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so we do have a couple questions. Okay. Um, so let's see. So let's just kind of go through some of the comments as well. Um, so let's see. Love Hoka. Love Hoka <laughs> shoes. Love Hoka. Love Hoka. Yes. Oh yes we all know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's see here. Talking about injury recovery. Oh, Carla. Carla says she likes the loop on the back of her, um, back of her Hoka's to pull them on. I, I hope you never get rid of it. She says. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, little something changed here. Now we have the kind of built in. The intuitive heel tab. Yeah, the, yeah. the heel tab here, okay. which actually, because I loved that feature too. And then I'm a Clifton wearer. So when I got the Clifton 7s, put this on, I actually like this better because you can have a little bit more to grab and help assist on. Sure. I had the exact same yeah. experience. I first, <laughs> when we first got it, I was like, oh no, I, I love the loop. Just putting my finger through and cranking it on. But this, That's without like thinking, I just easier. grabbed it and yeah. And it yeah. just kind of like a slide for your heel. So. And it does help actually extend the life of that heel counter itself mm -hmm. because you ah. are kind of pulling it back and okay, creating sure. a bit more room. Um, you're not you're not bending this in like you would with the, uh, oh, with the loop. Oh, sure, yeah, okay. All right. Um, so uh, Mike saying Speed Goat is the best trail shoe on the market. 
Carla is saying, <laughs> I love my hiking, uh, Hoka hiking boots. Mine are higher, so she has the Kaha, super yep. comfortable right out of the box. No blisters are perfect. All right, so Dan is asking, what model will be best for recovery from s- fractured vertebrae? I cushion? Oof. Ugh. Looking for everyday walk around shoe. Walk around shoe. Yeah, probably okay. Bondi then. Bondi probably a Bondi. Gaviota yeah. potentially, depending yeah. on you know the support needs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Aura slides for in your house. Oh yeah. yeah. So Those actually, somebody so else brings that up. Um, be sure to talk about the recovery sandals for um for post run. Um, yes. which um we do have over on the wall there. Um, so what's the deal with the with the sandals then? So they're like heaven on your feet, right? <laughs> um, it's basically, it's a dual density midsole, which is great because a lot of um, sandals out there are single density. Sure. Um, and it's basically like wearing the Bondi around without okay. the upper. Yeah. Um, very comfortable. I mean, you know, I wear the slides around the house with my socks because um, I'm Minnesotan. <laughs> but when I'm outside, <laughs> I'll wear my flips. And honestly, the, they say recovery, but they, yes, they help with recovery after long runs and stuff, but you can wear them all day. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a fantastic shoe, and yeah. they're super comfortable. Yeah. Before COVID, I did wear them to the state fair all day, and my feet felt great the next day, so that it definitely passed the all-day yes, test. Yes, um, Minnesota. Yeah. And another thing to point out, um, the so the recovery um, slides are APMA um, certified or has right. the American um, Podiatrist Medical Association's mm-hmm. uh, seal of approval. Uh, on the recovery slides, as well as the Clifton, the Bondi, the Urahi, and Gaviota. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like I said before, we get tons of recommendations from PT, doctors. I mean, um, somebody was just in the other day, a doctor center here, she said, I need some Hoka's. Yep. <laughs> he said, get me some Hoka's. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, lots of lots of recommendations from, from docs and PT. Um, okay, and then um, let's see. Mike is asking about the Mach 4 versus the Rincon. Um, which we don't h- so so the mock we're getting in so the mock the new mock's coming in in June uh, we don't normally carry the Rincon mm-hmm. um, but what's the difference between those two? You know I, I think of the Clifton as or excuse me the Rincon is Clifton light um, same stack heights as a Clifton um, but you know about an ounce lighter. Um, it's going to have all those kind of same soft properties of the Clifton. The Mach, however, um, utilizing that, that ProFly midsole and the rubberized EVA outsole is just going to feel much more energetic underfoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rocker is a bit more aggressive. It's going to get you on your toes a little bit more. So it depends if somebody is looking for that kind of Clifton experience but a lighter, more nimble feel, or if they want a more energetic experience, then I'd, then I'd jump into the Mach. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. And the Mach will also feel a bit firmer underfoot than, say, the Rincon. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It okay. definitely is a little bit more bouncy when, when running in it. Okay. But the Mach also has the exact same stack heights as the Rincon yeah. and the Clifton as well. So if you're worried about what has more cushioning, they all have 29 millimeters in the heel, 24 in the forefoot, uh, for men's anyways. Right, sure. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like the questions that I had here so far. So um, if you're still watching, we still have quite a few people watching. Any other questions, now's your time to put them into the chat. Um, we'll get to those and, um, I should be able to see here. Let me see. Can I see who is actually watching somewhere? Cause I, cause we got some stuff to give away. Yeah. Thing, don't yeah. Is there a way for me to see who's watching? All right. So, um, drop a comment. If you want to win something, drop a comment right now. Even though if you dropped a comment already, drop another comment. Let us know you're watching right now. That way I have your name, know you're watching, and then we can pull some prizes for um, those of you that joined us today and are watching. So um, we're a, like a minute behind the late, I think, here with the, the video. So we'll just wait for those, oh those yeah. comments to come in. But what do we have? What do we have for prizes? Well, um, I'm going to take the headset away. off and always the best part it is what the elevon josh is getting all the good stuff uh we're we're on the three aren't we where are we on? We're on the two. two. We're on the two. And that just, that doesn't update till. That doesn't, not, you'll not see. Update. <laughs> okay, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Anytime yes. in the immediate future. In, in okay, the, yeah, got it, yeah. got it. Okay. So we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Have them here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. What do we got today? Um, Ooh. We do have some of these insulated Hoka 
water bottle. Fancy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and it, is this, what is this? Oh, yeah. Is it has this a little a clip. You can clip it what? on. What? You um, can clip your keys to it? We have some Hoka <laughs> all day hats, um, very, very comfortable casual hats. <laughs> um, and then, very exclusive, um, available at hoka.com only, um, some casual lifestyle Hoka t shirts as well. Yeah. Both men's and women's cuts. So, Super cool depending thing. on who wins, we can figure out the sizes and go okay, from there. Okay, sure. Why am I. Now we're back to uh, back to my live thing here. Okay, I'm here. I love my hokas. Pick me. Oh, I also <laughs> have. Right. Right. I love it. I have fanny right. packs in case anyone oh, is really into fanny, fanny packs. Fanny pack. so. Just well, just call right. it out. We'll get you one. There we go. Okay. Okay. So let's say so we've got I've got a handful of people here still watching, and all right. So what maybe can we um let's let's uh. We can draw, or we could ask a question, and whoever answers oh it gosh. correctly first. Oh, that's, um, that sounds complicated. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Um, well, how about let's start with a hat. So we got a hat, and let's go with Spin. Carla. Woo! Carla is going to be the winner of our free hat. Woo! Free hat. Carla says she likes free stuff. You're yes. going to look good. Yes, I know you like free stuff, Carla. Yes. All right, Carla. Hat. All right. Time got to that fly. Side. Perfect. All right, got a couple more people still watching. All right, let's do, how about Dan water. getting a Hoka water bottle? Yeah, Dan. Dan was asking questions about the injury recovery. Yep. You can clip your keys to this. I don't know. <laughs> 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 All right, or and your, let's see, backpack. what else do we got here? Or to your backpack. Um, a t-shirt. Oh, t-shirt. All yes. right. And it comes in blue and or kind of a... Like a light gray. Yes, white. yes, we'll go with that. Okay. Yes, Cute. Li lifestyle, soft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Cozy. And let's see. How about uh, Danny? Uh, Danny must be watching from up in the cities. Yeah, Danny. Ooh. Triathlete. Pro went pro this year. Oh, yeah. get it. All right. All right. All right. Do we have anything else, or are we, uh, what do we got? Um, I have more hats. I have more shirts, um, right. and I have a couple more water bottles. How about this? We've got Mike and Tammy and Heidi, who have commented and are still watching. Perfect. And let's see what we can, we got, we've got a couple other things for them, I think. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, we do. Heidi, love your name. <laughs> My stepmom's name. <laughs> She's a wonderful lady. So I'm going to get you a water bottle. All right. <laughs> Another it, water bottle. Okay, you can clip your the keys bottle. on there. No, <laughs> I just keep saying that. You're really excited about I the am, keys. I am. I really am because I lose my keys all the time. <laughs> nice. Okay. And um, we'll grab a couple other things for, um, for Mike and for Tammy here. All right, so for those of you that are watching, um, if you won a prize tonight, uh, we'll have it here for you to pick up at the store um, or shoot us a message. We can figure out a different way to get it to you if we need to. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching. It was really fun. And um, I want to shout out to um, Mark and his business, which is called what now? What was it? Critical eSports for doing this like fancy setup for us tonight. So we have mics and extra cameras mm -hmm. and the whole nine yards because I knew it wasn't going to work with the three of us with just a little laptop. So Mark's here taking care of all of that. That's awesome. Um, Kim is here responding to comments over on the uh, other computers. We got a whole team, whole team effort. Um, and it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun to have fun. you guys. Thanks so for having us, Tiffany. Yeah, this thank was, this you. Was a blast. Yeah, absolutely. Make yeah. it a weekly thing. So. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Mark would Mark would want to do that, <laughs> but um, we'll sandwich into the yeah, yeah, yeah. But after this, we get to talk about um, spring twenty two, which yeah. is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so after we wrap up here, the three of us are going to sit down and talk about spring twenty two and. I'm going to start writing orders for next spring. Yeah, it's and crazy. Yeah, hoka, yeah. hoka, hoka, all things hoka tonight. So we have so much fun. Yeah, well, thank you guys so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Again, um, Mary and Josh from Hoka, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on Facebook Live, commenting and, and watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll do more of these education events um, coming up, I'm sure. And Hopefully, maybe more, um, maybe oh some yeah. group runs, maybe some, yeah, maybe yeah. some uh, test runs and some shoes. Yeah. Yeah. On the trails. The future. yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Things are things are looking up. So. Yep. All Hawkins right. is watching. Hawkins. Hey Hawkins. Oh Hawkins. Hey buddy. Hi. <laughs>
It's bedtime. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> all right well Alrighty. thank you guys so much yeah. thanks everybody for thank joining you. us we really appreciate it and um yeah let's uh let's, let's go chat hoka perfect hoka spring 22 yay yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah all right awesome thanks, guys. Thanks. Have a thanks great everyone day. Bye. appreciate it